welcome to this, and if you're reading, if you saw the intro, or if you hopefully you read the uh, the title of the video, um, this will seem very strange because I have said before that I probably would never do Chikara DVD review. Well, I changed my mind. Um, there's a reason why I changed my mind. There's a very good reason why I changed my mind, but I did change my mind. This will probably be a pretty epic kind of review. Um, I'm going to talk about King of Trios 2008 and. I usually don't do videos or reviews of events that have, aren't fairly new or, or, or haven't just been released. Um, and this is one, of course, that hasn't. And the reason is because 2000, Team Shrews 2009 is getting ready to come upon us. Um, if you look in the description box, there's a whole lot of links. Um, a whole lot of links. Um, and uh, including the Chikara website. There's also the Chikara uh, Pro website. The King of for King of Trios, which Chikara put up. Um, there's also a Smart Market video if you want to get these DVDs. Um, there's the Chikara Fans website as well. And another website, which I will get to once I start talking about the matches. Um, that said, um, why I wanted to do this. Given of when the 2009 tournament, this year's tournament, is, I will not be able to go. If it was a, if it was a week before it is, I would probably be able to make it. But because of when it is... I'm not going to be able to go, and so I thought I would come on here because I so enjoyed last year's tournament, and looking at this tournament, it looks very good as well. Um, I wanted to try to get people, because it's thanks to YouTube and their nice little toys that they gave us to play with on uh, YouTube, um, I can kind of gauge and see where viewers are from and all of that sort of thing, and I do know that there's... A good number. I'm not going to say a bunch, but uh, but a good number of people who are with probably within 100, 150 miles of uh, of Philadelphia, who could, in my opinion, easily go to these shows. And if I can kind of convince them, just one or two of them, to go to one of these shows, um, I, I would I would feel I'd feel much better about myself in a lot of ways. Um, so that's kind of why I wanted to come on here and talk about this. Um, the 2009 tournament is coming up fairly soon. Um, it's going to be March 27th, 28th, and 29th. Um, it's a fairly big tournament. Um, not as big as last year's. Last year it was 24 teams. This is 26 teams. Um, 26, 16 teams mainly just do, I would imagine, for financial reasons. But um, if you've never heard of the King of Trios, King of Trios is basically a trios tournament, a um, six-man tag tournament. Um, you have a bunch of teams of six, or six, listen to me, teams of three, and um, it's pretty good stuff, to be honest. Um, you know, last year's had a lot of interesting, interesting, interesting uh, people in it. Um, this year's has just as many, and I will, I will actually go through the list of people just so you can know who they are. For those of you not aware, even though you can go to the links and all of that sort of thing, but you have the cold front. Of Al Snow, Iceberg, and Glacier. Glacier was at last year's uh, tournament as a surprise participant. Um, was very over, and uh, was very cool to see. I will say that. Um, you also have the Masters of a Thousand Hold. No Dean Malenko, but you do have uh, Mike Quackenbush, um, George Rivera, and and the legend, the God Johnny Saint. Um, making a U, making I believe is the first time he's ever been in the U.S. As far as I'm aware, he he may have been at some point, but he is going to come to the U.S. He's going to be in this tournament. Um, that within itself is probably worth to see. Um, this guy, even at his age, and I, when I say his age, I'm not just saying that, um, can still go the way he can. is fairly amazing to me. Uh, you have the Deathmatch Kings. Of uh, Necker Butcher, Toby Keen, Klein, I'm sorry, I say Clean, Klein, and Brain Damage. You also have Incoherence of Hollow Wicked, Frightmare, and Delirious. You have the Osirian Portal, yay, Osirian Portal. Team uh, PWG, which will be El Generico and the Young Bucks. Uh, Team Epic War, which will be Tony Kazana and Ryan Drago along with Austin Aries. The future is now of Lance Durago, um, Equinox, and Helios. The Roughnecks of Brody Lee, Eddie Kingston, and Grizzly Redwood. The Soul Touches, 
which uh, they were a team from last year's tournament, which I will talk about, who got over in a mad, sick way in one night, um, the likes of which will probably would probably surprise a lot of people, um, of Willie Richardson, Trauma, and Rocket. Um, very, uh, Willie Richardson got mad over last year. It, it was fairly good to see. So it's fairly good to see him back. Um, CZW of Beef Wellington, uh, Pinky Sanchez, and Greg Excellent. Um, we also have the first family of Darren Corbin, um, Eric Cannon, and Ryan Cruz. Fist. We also have Team Uppercut of Claudio Castanoli, The Squire, Dave Taylor, and someone to be named. We do not know who this will be. Lots of speculation. They will be named at a later date. We also have The Unstable of Vin Gerard, Stigma, and Colin Delaney. And the final team that was just announced this week, which is why I've been holding off to do this, um, is Team DDT, which will be... Da-da-da! Um, Iyabushi, Kobo, and Michael Nakazawa, who was there last year and had one of the best gimmicks last year. Complete, complete hilarity ensued as he was doing his thing. Um, but as you can see, that's this year's fairly big stuff. And um, hopefully anyone that would be able to go to these shows will go. Um, last year when I saw this, um, this was one of the shows I truly wanted to go to. Along, I mean, I, you know, which says a lot because the shows that when I watched them, I felt like I really wish I had actually been to them. WrestleMania 24, Super Card of Honor 3, um, Death Before Dishonor last year, um, this year's Wrestle Kingdom, and then I would throw these three shows in right with them. It was that sort of just hilarity and marvelousness. Um, if you've never seen, you have never seen Chikara. Um, Chikara is a lot of craziness. Um, that's the only way I can really put it. It's a lot of comedy, a lot some seriousness thrown in every once in a while, but um, a little bit of everything, and it is fun. And I always, it is. That's the one thing I will always say about when I see shows that I really like of theirs. They are fun. Um, they don't take themselves necessarily too seriously. It is based a lot of on Lucha Libre, but um, that is fine and dandy with me, as I'm not someone that absolutely hates it. Like some people, if, if you don't like that, then you probably are not going to like Chikara if you've never seen Chikara before. But these are the three shows. If you've never if you've never seen Chikara, I would definitely um, recommend picking up and seeing because uh, they are very very good. Now. That is all I'm going to say about that. If you don't want to hear me review three DVDs back to back to back, um, you can stop listening now. I will warn you now. But now I'm going to get on to actually The King of Trios 2008 and um, the DVDs and kind of the wrestling and all of that which took place. You can get these DVDs at Smartmark Video, which you can get most everything Chikara does. Um, which uh, Smart Mark is very good. I usually don't talk a lot about them, only because I don't think they run enough sales, but that's my only real gripe. Um, but they do very good work. Um, most of the DVDs work, which is good. And most of the, and um, the only time I think I've ever had a problem with any of their stuff, it was very easy f to uh, get stuff that worked. So that is that. But anyways, let's get started with this craziness that was this tournament from last year. Um, we will start with night one. Night one we opened with Los Chivas. If you don't have never seen Los Chivas, just Chivas. If you don't know what Chivas is, Chivas is a soccer team in Mexico. Um, very famous soccer team and they are goats. That's their that's their mascot is goats. And so you have soccer playing goats, which I absolutely love against Team ROH of Shane Hagedorn, Rhett Titus, and Alex Payne, who were heels because they are ROH and they are evil ROH. They played up the fact that they are supposed to be representing the greatest wrestling organization in the world. Um, came off as, you know, the uppity kind of ROH fans that can be. Um, and that was kind of cool and funny. Um, and Los Chivas was being Los Chivas. This was a very good comedy match. I shouldn't say very good, but this was a good comedy match, as was most of this stuff. Um, it was very fun. Really enjoyed it. Uh, I gave it two and a half. You could give these whatever you wanted. It really doesn't matter. 
um, with a lot of this stuff because it's just it's just good 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 humorous fun. So there you go with that. Then we have the colony, who are ants. If you've never seen Chikara, I'm um, a fire ant, soldier ant, worker ant, taking on um, Team Japan of I will not get this right. Um, Shimitsu, um, Go, that was the guy's name, Go, and Michael Nakazawa. Um, Nakazawa had this great gimmick where he basically rubbed the baby oil all over himself, and so no one could really do anything with him because they kept slipping off of him because of the baby oil. It was very good, added a lot of comedy, um, was a lot like the first match in the fact that it wasn't necessarily the greatest worked match, but it was very funny and had psychology from a funny kind of standpoint. I enjoyed it a lot. It was very good. And then we come to the greatness, that because only Chikara would pull off something like this. Okay. For those of you that don't know, there is... I don't even know how to, exp I don't even know how to explain if you've never heard of this. But it's... Uh, have no idea how to explain Kaiju Boot. Kaiju Big battle. Basically, you have guys dressed up in Godzilla outfits, um, pretending to be pro wrestlers, pretending to be monsters, going out there and putting on uh, wrestling matches with fake buildings and the whole thing. It's quite hilarious. There's a link. It's the last link that will be in the um, in the uh, description if you truly are curious about what this is. They brought in three of their guys. They brought in the C Amigos of Call Me Kevin, um, Uni Bozuri, I guess, and and Cyclopsis, um, the third. And um, they took on the Order of the Neon Solar Temple, which includes Ultra Magnus Black, who is maybe the single greatest character in all of Chikara, um, Hydra and Crossbones. Basically, you had monsters taking on monsters. This was hilariously funny. The The match itself sucked. Um, uh, Wrestling-wise, it was horrible. I shouldn't say horrible, because it was funny. But this was like a grade-A five-star skit that was just hilarious. When I first saw this, I was cracking up. And I know that when Dirty White Boy first saw this, he was dying laughing because he could not believe someone actually put this on. And it's great. It's greatness. I gave it I gave it um, three and a quarter. Just I took what I thought the wrestling was worth, and I thought what the entertainment part of it was worth, and just took the half. Because that's the only way I could I could I could even grade this. It was absolutely stupendous. Um, it's something that has to be seen, in my opinion. And either you'll like it, or you're going to think it's the dumbest crap you've ever seen in your life. But I don't think it was. I think it was absolutely brilliant. And I loved every minute of it. And more stuff like this would be awesome. Um, very, very good stuff. Then we got um, Mike Quackenbush, uh, Shane Storm, and George Rivera taking on Team Egypt of Mecha Mummy, Ophirian, and Amasis. Um, this was very, very funny as well. Um, probably a lot funnier than probably a lot of people were thinking, uh, particularly with Mecha Mummy doing the whole Mecha Mummy bit and kind of kind of channeling a lot of Hulk Hogan, which was which was which was quite funny in my opinion. More funny, more hilarity, um, a a good match, um, particularly a good comedy match, particularly with Mecha Mummy using the Mecha Palm, um, which was very good, particularly if you know Mike Quackenbush and his move set. So very good stuff, in my opinion. Um, next we had Cheech and Cloudy taking on uh, Cheech and Cloudy and KZ um, from KZ is from Dragon Gate, taking on Brody Lee, Jimmy Olsen, and a mystery partner that was randomly drawn, and he would, there would be a second person like this, who was randomly drawn from um, uh, a hopper, was randomly drawn, and it was Retail Dragon. This was funny in that Brody Lee wanted nothing to do with Retail Dragon, and kept, like, causing... Re kind of tagging himself in and not really working well with Retail Dragon, um, along with the fact that Cheech and Cloudy and KZ were just good, fun stuff. This was just fun, fun, fun. Another, I would give this three stars, just on the fun factor, so this was good. Uh, next, we had the Naptown Dragons of Drake Younger. Uh, 
Die Hard Dustin Lee and Scott Vortetsky, I guess, taking on Team IPW UK of Martin Stone, Terry Frazier, and Shaw Samuels. I guess is what his first name is. And this was very good. This was very fun and exciting and was a bit different from anything else. This was more of a pure pure brawl. Um, when it was a little different from what we had been seeing. We were seeing a lot of comedy, um, a lot of a lot of more spotty. This was much more of a brawl, more of ground and pound type of wrestling. And that was very good. Again, uh, I, I give it three and a half. Um, next we had Los Chivas versus the Colony. Yes, Ants versus Goats. This was hilarity. This was good. I loved this. Um, more of stuff like this. Please. Um, I'm sure that if that if one Mr. Um, Russo saw this review, he would think that using these ideas on Nitro would be good. Unfortunately, he could never use these ideas as well as uh, Quackenbush and Group at Jakara for some unknown god-awful reason. Um, he would never be able to do them as good, which is probably a good thing because this is just great stuff. Um, next, we have Blackout of Eddie Kingston, Ruckus, and Joker taking on the Order of the Neo Solar Temple. This was um, this was what it was. Um, I gave it two and three quarters. Um, blackout basically going out there and being being blackout, um, which was you know kind of what it was. Hydro basically. Uh, went out there and, and was beat on the entire match and got a lot of sympathy. And the Solar Temple wound up being kind of the faces during this, which uh, was pretty was pretty interesting to see. And uh, it was just kind of the way it was, I guess is what you could say. But another another entertaining match. You'll hear me say that a lot. Then we had Mike Quackenbush, George Rivera, and Shane Storm taking on Cheech and Cloudy and MC KZ. That was his, that was what I was missing. I knew I was missing something. This was a very, very good match. Um, probably this was definitely, I, I would call this the match of the night. Um, I enjoyed this quite a bit and uh, felt like it was uh, definitely worth, um, de definitely the match of the night and, and definitely worth the wait to see and was a lot of fun. Uh, next we had Team IPW UK taking on the Golden Trios. Of Hallowicken, Delirious, and Helios. Um, this would seem like a very kind of mixed match, but they actually did a very good job. Um, another very good match. Uh, not as good as the match before it, but still a good match. There was a lot of good matches on there. There was nothing great, but there was a lot of good stuff, a lot of entertaining, and, uh, a, and a pretty good night, I would call, for night one. Then we had night two, in which we had. Um. Let's see if I can get this right. Uh, Miyawaka, Sazuma, and Kudo taking on the Southern Saints of Sean Reed, Reno Diamond, and Marcus O'Neill. Um, this was fun. Um, this, this was this was more of a I, I would say more of a true wrestling match than what we got on the first night, um, which was a little bit more hilarity, but still worked pretty well and uh, was fun and what it was. Uh, next we had the debut of the Soul Touches. Um, with Willie Richardson, um, Acid Jazz, and Rocket taking on Team BSE of Cobra Kai, Super Extremo, and Sombra Kandazi? I have no idea. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. Um, this was a lot of fun because the Soul Touches came out and got over and got over mad. Um, particularly Willie, D, uh, Willie Richardson, who... Uh, hit a leg drop from the top and this guy's like a 400 pounder he was doing a lot of cool stuff or not a 400 pounder but probably 300 pounder and it was hitting a lot of good stuff and, and just a lot of fun and again another fun fun match next we got Sweet and Sour Inc team of Bobby Dempsey, Sarah Del Rey and Tank Toland taking on Team Fist of Icarus, Grand Kuma and Chuck Taylor um, Sweet and Sour Inc were the faces here uh, believe it or not Bobby Dempsey got to wrestle which was good particularly back Back when this took place, and uh, was fun to see. This was just a, this was just kind of a their match, but it was fun and it was entertaining. Um, particularly some of the stuff Tank Tolan and uh, Grand Akuma did with each other. Sir Del Rey was in there, which in the world of Chikara actually makes sense. Women being in these matches, and of course Bobby Dempsey being kind of Bobby Dempsey was kind of fun and 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 
cool. So there we go. Then we had Team Stranglehold of Team Donst, um, Drew Garlic, and Andy Summer taking on the Fabulous Three of Mitch Ryder, Larry Sweeney, and Shane Hawk. Um, this was kind of an old school type of match. Um, was just kind of there, I would say. Uh, more, like I said, more of kind of an old school Southern type of match would be a good way to put it in a lot of good good ways. It didn't bring down the card, but still, as I said, entertaining, and that's what's important. Then we had Team IWS of El Generico Player Uno and Stupefy taking on Team First of Eric Cannon, Darren Corbin, and Ryan Cruz. This was excellent. Um, this was a lot of fun. They hit all sorts of crazy moves on each other. And uh, Player Uno, if you've never seen Player Uno, um, I can't... I, I can't even explain this spot. I'm not even going to try, but, but basically he's supposed to be like a video game inspired character, and uh, Eric Cannon pulled out a video game controller to control player Uno. It sounds stupid, but it was awesome, I promise you. Um, this was very good, very, very good stuff. Then we had Team Mexico of El Pantera, Lice Dorado, and Incognito versus, versus the Ice Creams of El Hydro Del Ice Cream and Ice Cream Jr. and their special mystery opponent, which was pulled from the hyper, which was Glacier. Yes, Glacier from WCW fame, who was mad over in the building. Um, definitely was older, but um, was good to see, was fun, and all of that sort of thing. Then we had Team Japan versus Team AZW, which was from Hawaii, I believe, of Akua. An Immortal Black and Immortal White. Immortal Black and Immortal White were basically supposed to be like the Immortals, from those of you that have seen 300. Um, Immortal Black and Immortal White were not very good. Akuma was, and uh, two, two and a half stars just was kind of their match. Then we got Fist versus the Soul Touches. This was very fun indeed. Another fun match between those guys. Um, hard hitting and uh, some really good spots. I would say. I mean, the Fabulous Three versus Team WWF of Demolition, Axe, Demolition Smash, and One Man Gang. This was absolutely fun. I gave this two, two stars, um, but you know what? Uh, the WWF guys didn't make fools of themselves. They actually looked pretty good. Uh, the Fabulous Three were just being the Fabulous Three. They kind of did an old school type of match, which, which was kind of good. Um, of course, if you remember... Um, demolition and one man gang. They basically were brawlers. That's basically what they did here. They can still brawl pretty good, uh, particularly for a bunch of old guys. And uh, it was a lot of fun and um, worked very well. And the ending was pretty good as well. Then we had uh, Team IWS versus Team Mexico, which was complete awesomeness. Um, this was, I loved this match. Four stars, lots of good spots, lots of good, just greatness. Then we go to night three, um, and we got the show introduction by Steve the Turtle Wiener, and I believe that's how you pronounce his name. This was absolutely hilarious and fun and great, and I liked it. Even maybe if I shouldn't have liked it, I liked it. It was pretty good. Then we got the Fist versus the Colony, a good match, um, kind of a lot better than I thought it would. I wouldn't think these guys would, would uh, mesh as well as I did. As they did, but uh, it was pretty good. I liked it, and it was good. And we had Team Mexico versus Mike Quackenbush, Shane Storm, and George Rivera. Um, there was a lot of of um, Quackenbush and Rivera in there with the other Luchador guys, which helped out a lot. This was a very good match. I really enjoyed this. Um, I'm not the biggest Lucha fan in the world, so um, I, I wouldn't call this a great match, but I call this a very good match, and. Uh, Liked a lot. Another very fun match. So there you go there. Then we had a Team Japan versus Team Blackout. Another fun um, match between... Well, this match wasn't necessarily fun. This match was pretty hard-hitting and um, was, was, was spotty in places, but, but was still good and was what it was, I guess is what you would say. Then we had the Golden Trio versus the Fabulous Three. Um, another fairly okay match. Not, not as good as I would have hoped um, because, I, you know, I thought this would be a much more comedy match 
And it was, it just wasn't quite as good as I would have hoped it would have been. But there you go. Um, then we got a tag team gauntlet match featuring Demolition Crossbones and Hydra, the Immortals, uh, the North Star Express, the Cartel, the Southern Saints, Los Chivas, the Super Smash Brothers. Um, let's see. Shimizu and Go and Bobby Dempsey and Sir Del Rey. Um, I was hoping this would be very good. And this was just kind of there. It's kind of a mess. Um, kind of the worst of TNA, you know, kind of the bad that TNA X Division matches when I throw a bunch of guys in there can be. Um, it was still okay, but nothing, not, not as good as it should have been, in my opinion. Uh, then we had Blackout versus the Golden Trio. Um, this was going along pretty nicely, and then they did a screw job ending. Not that, not that the screw job ending is bad, because it really wasn't a bad thing for a screw job ending. And actually worked in the long run, but it just it, it, it made it very anticlimactic. But there you go. Uh, then we had the Colony versus Team Mexico. Um, Team Mexico working with the Colony was kind of interesting. Didn't really work well together, but um, it was still like a okay match and entertaining and served its purpose. Then we had Vingerard Glacier, uh, Matt Martin Stone, and Reno Diamond, and probably the worst match of the entire tournament. Um, only because I, this just, this just, guys just didn't, it was kind of just thrown in, it just felt like a match that was kind of thrown in there, and because it was just kind of thrown in there, it just didn't really work. Next we had, um, Michael Nakazuma with the Baby Oil returning versus MCKZ, and, uh, this was okay, um, I thought it might have been a little better than it was, but it, it was okay. Um, Nakazuma doing the oil bits, and there was a lot of good comedy oil bits, which worked out pretty well. And uh, like I said, it was it was what it was. Then we had Tim Dons, create a wrestler, Ch uh, Chiba Two, and Eric Cannon taking on Femi and Omasis and Los Ice Creams. Um, this was okay as well. Not as it, it didn't go quite as long as I had hoped, but um, it was kind of what it was. Some good comedy spots, particularly between. Uh, Particularly with Chivas 2 and uh, and Los Ice Creams, which which I personally are one of my favorite things in all of Chikara. So there you go. And we got the finals, which was Blackout versus Team Mexico, um, which was fairly good and uh, not not quite as good as I had hoped, but um, it was still fairly good. The guys had you know wrestled all weekend, so that's kind of what what were you gonna hope? Um, but it, it was still a good. Uh, good match and entertaining and uh, kind of an anticlimactic, but um, it was still still what it was. And uh, another good night. I thought all three nights were good, entertaining. I felt like they again they were fun, and that's not something wrestling always is anymore. Is fun, so that kind of, that does kind of make a statement in my opinion. And uh, again, if 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 you always wanted to try Shakara, but you always were kind of leery. Um, in a lot of ways, this this would be, I think, the three DVDs to pick up, only because I think if you like this, you're probably going to like most of what Chikara has to offer. And as I said, the C Amigos match is something that has to be seen. That's all I can say about it. It just it just it just has to be seen. And uh, with that, um, I am done. Hopefully, I went through it fast enough to where I didn't bore anybody. Now, I didn't go into great detail in the matches, but uh, I didn't want to, like, ramble on forever. So, there you go. But, again, um, DVD score of an 8.75. Um, some people might question that due to the fact that, you know, there's not a lot of great matches on here, but there's a whole lot of really good matches. And, um, and again, um, giving, kind of grading Chikara versus, you know, what we expect from a lot of wrestling really is unfair because a lot of it is meant to be fun. A lot of it is meant to be kind of silly and um, and a little bit more comedic, comedic. So there is all of that to keep in mind when watching their shows. Um, check out the links that I included and uh, check out the DVD. And again, if you live anywhere near Philadelphia and uh, you can make the shows um, from this year's, definitely do it because I, I definitely feel like you will probably really enjoy yourself. And um, it's and very much worth the checking out. And with that, I am out, and later.